you are going to calculate the torque on a coil in a magnetic field. Imagine we have a magnetic field like this. This is a north pole and this is south pole. Okay, you got a north pole, this is south pole. Okay, and right inside, you are keeping a coil. This is a coil, okay? A current enters through this. It passes along this direction, like this, like this. It goes up and it exits through this. So basically, if you take a coil and then if you put it in a magnetic field and you're letting a current pass through it, what happens? All the conductors will experience a force. Okay, for example, look at this, look at this. I have this frame here. Imagine the frame alone is there. The middle portion is empty. All right, middle portion is empty. You're taking a frame. Top conductor, right conductor, bottom conductor, and left conductor. There are four conductors, right? Top conductor, right conductor, bottom conductor, and left conductor. Got it? Got it? Right. So, you know, for this, each of these conductors will experience a force. I, L, B, sine theta. Sine theta. I, L, B, sine theta. Yesterday, we learned again, force on a conductor. Force on a conductor carrying current. Force on a conductor carrying current is given by I, L, B, sine theta. I is the current passing through it. L is the length of the conductor. B is the magnetic field. Forget about the time being, for the time being, forget about sine theta. We will make sine theta 1. There is a technique for doing that. Okay, sine theta. Theta will be 90 in all cases. So just focus on this number, this equation, F is equal to I L B. Okay, so I'm drawing the force on the top conductor. Force on the top conductor is I L B up. I L B up. And force on the bottom conductor is I will be down. Don't ask me why. Because you are not supposed to know it. I can prove it if you want. You take L cross B direction. If you take L cross B direction, you will see that one force is up, the other force is down. The thing is that they are going to cancel out. Okay. So if you keep the conductor this way, if you keep the conductor this way, like this, you know, this conductor will experience a force up, up, and this conductor will experience a force down. Got it. But what about the side conductors? I can tell you, oh, this is not length of that conductor I call small letter b. Length of small conductor is small letter b. So IBB, IBB. What about this conductor? Look at this one. The side conductor will experience a force into the board. This conductor will experience a force out of the board. Look at this. I've shown you once. Now this conductor experiences a force up. This conductor experiences a force down. Whereas this one has a force towards you, this one has a force towards me. What happens now? They will create a torque. Am I correct? One force is to you, another force is to me. So they will create a couple or a torque. Okay, torque. You're going to calculate that torque. Okay, so basically these two forces will cancel out because they are acting along the same line. If forces act along the same line, they'll cancel out. Force on the bottom conductor, IBB down. Force on the top conductor, IBB up. They're going to cancel out. Force on the left conductor, ILB is towards you. Force on the right conductor, ILB is towards me. There are two forces on the conductor. They are going to cancel. They are going to create a torque due to which the coil will rotate. I'll, I'll just draw the top view of this conductor. Just see this top view of the conductor. See this? This is the top view of the conductor. I can tell you, I have the top view of the conductor. What's happening now? See this. This is the conductor. I said the coil, the loop, the coil. And then look at the top. Look at the top. What I see is the edge, right? I'm keeping it this way. What I'm seeing is the edge. Do you understand? Do you understand? And one force. Look at this. One force here. One force here, the yellow one. One force is this way, this way. One force is this way. The other force is this way. Right. So, in fact, I'm looking from above. Look at this. So these are the forces. One force is towards you. One force. I can't hold it that way. One force is towards me. Okay. Okay. I'm holding it this way now. Look at that. Do you see this? Do you see this? Oh, I'll do. Can I have a pen, please? Pen. Right. Look at this. Okay, good. Got it. Right. These are the forces. One, this pen. This force is towards you. This force is towards me. Got it. I got it like this. Okay. I'm holding it this way. Okay. 
and I'm just keeping it like this. Do you see this? Do you see this? Yes. One force is like this way, one force is like this way. They are creating a torque. Okay. And this torque is going to rotate it. All right. I'm going to calculate the torque now. I'm going to, I'll give you. I'm going to calculate the torque now. For calculating torque, we need something like perpendicular distance because first year classes we learn force is equal, torque is equal to force into perpendicular distance. See this? I'll tell you this distance. This, this force is what? ILB. This force is what? That is also ILB. ILB. This force is ILB. This force is ILB. I'm going to call this distance EX. What is EX? It is the perpendicular distance between the forces, right? Correct. This force is acting along this line. This force is acting along this line. Perpendicular distance is this, right? So what is the equation for torque? Any one of the forces, this ILB or this ILB, into perpendicular distance. Okay, perpendicular distance. Look at this. This angle will be called theta. This angle will be called theta. Can you tell me what sine theta from the figure is? Sine theta, opposite side, EX, divided by hypotenuse. This is B, because that is actually the top end, right? Correct. The top conductor I call by the length B, right? By the name B, right? Oh, no. Look at this. This is my coil. Look at the top one. I'm seeing the top one here, right? Top one's length was called small letter B, right? It's done. It's finished. So that's going to be cross multiplying. That's going to be X is equal to B sine theta. I'm done. I into L into B into. In place of X, I'm putting B sine theta. Finished. Look at that. L and B. Length into breadth is called what? Area. Length of the conductor into breadth is called area. Length of the loop into breadth is called area of the conductor. So I get I into length into breadth is A into B into sine theta. Got it. This is the equation for torque. And this is for one turn. What if I have N turns like this? I have like many turns like this. I'll multiply by N, right? So I'm going to get what? For n turns, I'll have n i a b sin theta. That is the final equation for torque, which I may rewrite as, I'll write here, tau is equal to n i a b sin theta may be called, tell me, a b sin theta may be called a cross b. a b sin theta may be called a cross b. So the final equation is a cross b. We also call n i a together as m, dipole moment. M. N into I into A will be called dipole moment M. So that makes it M B sine theta or it is M cross B. Torque is given by M cross B. Trust me, this is one of the most complicated derivations to teach. Okay, because it's conceptual. One thing is this and secondly, there are numericals coming from this. Important numericals. I'll do now after break. Okay. But this is what it is. You take a coil, you know, imagine the middle portion is empty. All right, only the frame is there. I used to have a coil with me. I don't have it anymore. Right. Anyway, you'll keep a coil and then top conductor has a force up, bottom conductor has a force down and they are cancelling out because they are acting along the same line. They won't create a torque. But look at this conductor, left conductor, right conductor. One conductor will have a force to you. Another conductor will have a force to me. Okay, all this happens only when kept in a magnetic field and a current is allowed to pass through it. Should be a current carrying coil placed in a magnetic field. And then the coil experiences a torque like this due to which the coil rotates. Right. Okay. The coil will rotate. And the torque is given by what? This force is ILB. That force is ILB. Look at them. ILB, ILB. They create a couple. Couple or a torque. How to create? Find the torque. Any one of the forces into perpendicular distance. Say it again. Any one of the forces into perpendicular distance. Any one of the forces, ILB, into perpendicular distance is X. And X is what? From the figure, sine theta is opposite side. X divided by hypotenuse. This length is in fact B. The length of the top end, right? Top conductor, right? It is B. So you get X is equal to B sine theta. And then ILB into B sine theta. Length into breadth is called area. I A B sine theta. If there are n turns, n windings on it, you call it n i a b sine theta, or it is n i into a cross b. 
and NIA together may be called NIA together may be called this may be called M. So that makes it M B sine theta for it is M cross B. Okay. Now there is a question you could have asked why we take this angle as theta. There is a reason for it. I can tell you. In fact, theta is what? This is the direction of magnetic field. This is the direction of area vector. The angle between them is theta. If that is theta, this is what? 90 minus theta. I repeat. Look at this. Just watch what I'm doing. Look at this. The area vector. I'm drawing the area vector. This is the magnetic field. Okay. Magnetic field is going this way. All right. Then I'm drawing the area vector here. Look at the area vector. Area vector. They are making an angle of theta by definition. If that is theta, next is what? 90 minus theta because this is 90 now. 90 minus. If that is 90 minus theta, this is alternate angle. 90 minus theta. If that is 90 minus theta, this is already 90. This has to be theta, right? Correct. I didn't take it randomly. This angle theta was taken with a purpose. Got it. That theta is in fact what? The angle between the magnetic field and area vector. But you don't have to know it in fact. From an exam point of view, just take this angle as theta. This angle as theta, not this one. Okay. Be very careful there. And this is what we saw yesterday. Uh, in, in the case of a current carrying coil, in the case of a current carrying coil, we saw it yesterday, the torque acting on a coil. See this? We saw it yesterday. This is what? We have a current carrying coil and you're placing it inside a magnetic field. When you bring a magnet, see it starts rotating because it is acted upon by a torque now. Got it? It is acted upon by a torque now. Got this? And uh, this is also... Same principle. We have like a current. You must have seen this before. A battery with two magnets and then you're putting a coil automatically spins. It's a current carrying coil. This is a current carrying coil placed inside a magnetic field. Where is the magnet? The small tiny magnets, neodymium magnets kept at the bottom. They look like a buttons, small button. Okay, that is the same thing. Okay, we'll take a break and come back. <laughs> 